just need to reassemble. What's up, comic book enthusiasts? This is your boy RBG, hitting you guys up with something pretty awesome. A lot of you who are familiar with my content have noticed that I've been pretty proactive with all the Spider-Man PS4 news coverage, so you can probably tell I've been pretty excited about that particular title. Like 2018 has been lit in terms of gaming and for Marvel in general. Because not only do we have a new Spider-Man game hitting shelves in September, but we also have Avengers Infinity War which has been dominating the box office. But anyways, I think it's clear that the Marvel brand has been making power moves since their announcement of Spider-Man PS4. And the recent announcement that Marvel Studios will soon be reacquiring the rights of popular franchises like X-Men and Fantastic Four only adds to the hype. In January of last year, Square Enix announced that it had signed a multi-title contract to produce games based on Marvel Comics properties. As part of the announcement, the studio teased the first of these, which is called the Avengers Project. Now this was a brief announcement that was presented via a trailer that in my opinion wasn't much to write home about. Aside from the basic imagery of the Avengers symbol surrounded by the destruction and a vague voiceover which seemed to hint that a tragedy has befallen the heroes, the trailer ended with the hashtag reassemble, which again indicates that the story has something to do with saving or salvaging the Avengers. Marvel's initial description of the Avengers project promises a completely original story but the details of the story are scarce. Now this approach is very similar to what Marvel has done with the new Spider-Man game. According to some of the interviews we got from Game Informer, Insomniac mentioned that Marvel Games approached Sony Interactive Entertainment wanting them to publish a Marvel related title. It would be the first licensed game developed by Insomniac after 22 years of developing their own intellectual properties. After they stressed their interest, Insomniac was asked what hero property they'd like to work on to which they chose Spider-Man and the rest was history. It seems like Marvel Entertainment will be following the same formula with other well-known game developers. We're talking AAA studios who put in a lot of time and effort into their games. And this just seems like a step in the right direction with them because it's not that often that you get a Marvel related game that's highly anticipated, especially with games like Spider-Man. Of course, one could argue that they've been trying to step their game up for a while with projects like Disney Infinity Marvel Super Heroes, which was the first Marvel licensed game to be published after the slew of god awful Sega games whose contract expired after the release of Captain America Super Soldier in 2011. And Activision had its run with franchises like X-Men and Spider-Man, which contracts expired after the release of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But after the whole Disney Marvel Infinity movement and influx of mobile games, I was a little uncertain of what the future would hold for them. Especially how Marvel has been treating popular gaming series like Marvel vs. Capcom that's known for its ensemble of popular comic book characters. Like I know that the movies play a major role in keeping comic book characters relevant, but there's no reason to completely leave out X-Men characters just because you don't hold the movie rights. Not to mention how spiteful they've been with the cancellation of mainstay comics like Fantastic Four. But thankfully things seem to be on the up and up since we're seeing more X-Men characters get incorporated into newer games. And the recent announcement that Fantastic Four is making their triumphant return to the comics just ensures us that the film acquisition is being finalized as we speak. And just like Marvel Studios has created their expanded universe, Marvel Entertainment is looking to do the same with their video games. In their announcement, Square Enix and Marvel said that two specific studios are expected to lead development, Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. Two big studios that just so happen to be subsidiaries under the Square Enix umbrella. Crystal Dynamics is known for its recent 2013 reboot of Tomb Raider and its sequel, Rise of the Tomb Raider, while Eidos Montreal is best known for their rebooted Deus Ex franchise, including 2016's Deus Ex Mankind Divided. So yeah, they're no slouch to creating AAA titles on multi-platforms. If you ask me, I say that their Square Enix is bread and butter considering Square takes what it seems like eons to develop IPs like Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy. But anyways, that was basically all the news we had gotten about this quote-unquote Avengers project. They've been for the most part very tight-lipped on what genre in particular it will be tackling or what the universe would entail, but as of this year, it seems like more and more information is trickling in through various articles and interviews. Earlier this year in February, Marvel.com released an article giving more specifics about the many top tier talents that they'll be recruiting to aid in working on this project. They stated that this is an epic assembling of 15 top industry talents that includes the likes of Shauna Sky, former Naughty Dog creative director, and Steven Barry who's worked for companies like EA and Visceral Games. They went on saying and I quote, We hire 15 world renowned industry veterans spanning production leadership, animation, design, art, and engineering who have previously worked on games such as Batman Arkham Origins, Dead Space, Star Wars Battlefront, and many more. 
the AAA experience adds to an already deep roster, making us well positioned to deliver on the ambitious goals we've set for ourselves with the Avengers project. It's a stellar addition of many people who fit incredibly well into our wheelhouse of building game experiences we all love. So I think that bit of information will have a lot of fans optimistic about this new project, especially since I see titles like the Batman Arkham series being uttered in the same sentence. I know Marvel has been dominating the movie market with all their billion dollar blockbusters, but WB and DC have been killing all the other aspects with comics, cartoons, and most of all, video games. Like, never mind that the Arkham and Injustice series have been some of the best superhero video games. They've arguably been some of the best video games period in their respective genres. More and more we're seeing big studios like EA tackle brands like Star Wars and NetherRealm Studios with the DC Universe. They've proven that comic book properties can translate well into video games if you develop them properly. That's something that's been obviously lacking from Marvel games. But anyways, Marvel Entertainment went on to say that the Avengers project will feature a completely new and original story that will introduce a universe gamers can play in for years to come. The project will be jam-packed with characters, environments, and iconic moments that will thrill Marvel fans. Based on the notion that the Avengers will have to reassemble, I'm guessing we're going to be dealing with a team that's been established for quite a while. Like, maybe they disbanded or some unknown force has caused them to separate. Just looking at the teaser trailer, you can tell that things aren't well with our favorite Marvel team. I know some of the fans are probably wondering if this original story will parallel with the new Avengers Infinity War film. I'm just hoping for some solid gameplay that will work in tandem with each Avengers skill set. Like how Insomniac is choosing to give us a somewhat sandbox experience to accompany Spider-Man's web swinging. As far as the story is concerned, I have faith that they'll give us something compelling since this is Crystal Dynamics we're dealing with here. If they can revitalize a stale franchise like the Tomb Raider series and make it relevant in today's era, then they can definitely do it for the likes of Iron Man or Captain America. But anyways, Marvel finishes the article off by saying, and I quote, We're committed to delivering an incredible, completely original Avengers experience to our gamers. And that means we are always looking to add amazing developers to our existing best in class studio talent. As development progresses, our studio continues to grow. The tremendous progress we've made on the Avengers project further drives us toward our goal of crafting something all Marvel fans will be proud of and will play for years to come. We can't wait to show you what we mean in the future. So hearing this, it sounds like Crystal Dynamics have been working on this project for quite some time. Like I know that we got the recent announcement of their latest endeavor, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which will be released in September, but I still think they've been mainly working with a new team to bring this new Marvel Universe to life. As a matter of fact, I'd like to mention that although Crystal Dynamics has always been the lead studio on Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider, they weren't really involved with this new title, instead choosing to swap out with Eidos Montreal as the leading developer. And I guess you could say that it seems rather odd for them not to take the development helm for the finale of what they started. I mean, they did give reasons to why they chose to provide additional development for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, like saying that it's nothing more than a collaboration and sharing of the spotlight. When I heard about this news, I instantly assumed that it's because they're focusing a majority of their time on the new Avengers game. That's like the only plausible answer I could think of, and I don't think they'll flat out come out and say it because that'll just ruin the surprise that they have in store for us. I mean, you gotta remember that this is still a somewhat top secret project and it would kinda be stupid to roll out all the details, especially when Spider-Man PS4 still has 4 months until it's released. But I'm hoping by the time E3 rolls around, Crystal Dynamics and Marvel will start releasing more info in regards to the concepts, the style, what genre they're gonna be going for, whether it's action or an MMO. Like, just give us an overall idea of what to expect. I mean, I guess them flat out saying that they plan on giving us an original story implies that they're not going to be piggybacking off of the MCU, but when they say they're introducing a universe gamers can play in for years to come, I'm guessing they'll follow a similar structure. Like one character might have a game that'll segue into a bigger game, or each individual Avenger will get three solo games a piece similar to the movies. Those are just some of my assumptions. But anyways, I was browsing around some of my favorite YouTube channels and I came across a video on EPN.TV interviewing the head developer of Idols Montreal, David Umfonsi. He basically talks about what went into the development of the new Tomb Raider game, but briefly goes into details how they'll be working in collaboration with Crystal Dynamics on the Avengers project, saying that Eidos Montreal will have a staff of 50 developers working in tandem with Crystal Dynamics. One thing that intrigued me the most was when he mentioned that this is a quote unquote initiative of different developers working together to make a good product. That's something that's missing from the gaming industry because most video game developers go by the in-house approach. There's not a lot of talents that are willing to step out of their respective territories to work with other companies on big name projects like this one. 
Like, it's obvious that Marvel Entertainment has an idea to assemble the most prestigious developers possible. But anyways, Afonsi goes on even further stating that this is a very ambitious project with a hefty budget to match, and it is by far the biggest project that Eidos and Crystal Dynamics has ever worked on. Now, I'm not sure if he's just blowing smoke, but I'll take his word for it. He did seem relatively enthused while talking about it, but he didn't want to give out too much info in regards to what the graphics engine they'll be using or what kind of gameplay the title will feature. If anything, I hope they just work with what they already have. Like in a lot of interviews, Afonzi mentions that they've developed a new lighting system for Shadow of the Tomb Raider along with a new rendering system for character models. That's definitely going to exploit the maximal potential of next-gen hardware like the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. And maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to play games in 4K along with 60fps instead of 30fps. But anyways, I think I've rambled on long enough. What do you guys think about this news? Are you digging this new approach Marvel Entertainment is taking towards gaming? And what are some of the gameplay styles you'd like to see incorporated into this project? Get at me in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me tremendously if you shared it on social media platforms with all your friends and followers. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.